Well, any large scale project typically involves some kind of vision. For one mid-Missouri man, his vision comes from the past. Tonight, after following this story for 19 months, photojournalist Scott Schaefer shows us the monumental task facing Jim Cooper, trying to bring history back to life, a project that took nearly four years to get off the ground. When I work on a project, no matter what it is, I want it to look like this, and so everything I do is working toward getting it to look like this. He's a historian, an artist, and a mechanic kind of all together. Most everything in it is all original. I looked at it every day. I went over and climbed on it and hoped that I would get an opportunity to do the work to it. This is a Seafire 15, former British Royal Navy. Here's one of the newest Seafires. C-515. Served in the British Royal Navy and then was transferred to the Royal Canadian Navy in 1945. Served aboard a Royal Canadian Navy aircraft carrier. This one survived because it was stolen and ended up in some barn for a few years. The airplane's been here over three years. I personally wouldn't want to rebuild this to static display. I want to rebuild it to flying example because it's an airplane. It's designed to fly. 1950 was when it was last flown. This will be the only one of its type flying, and when I see it in the air, I know, you know, I had a part in putting it back. Our machinist was in England in 1940 when the bombs were dropping. Although I was very young at the time, it's just like it happened yesterday. We would see as many as four or five hundred planes in the air at one time. And if you can imagine the noise of four or five hundred bombers with four engines. The noise was absolutely unbelievable. This is the part I don't like doing is the cleaning, but it has to be done. It makes all the difference in the world as to how the finish is when it's done. <sighs> We've chosen to repaint it like it once was. I'm using original photos. I love to paint. I love to put my vision on the canvas. So I'm trying to do it as accurate as possible. Here we are finally peeling off the masking. These are the British markings. Same colors the King Queen use on their crest. By Her Majesty's authorization. Starting to look like a bird. I'm happy with it, it's turning out okay. I'm in the process of working on the machine gun bays to get the guns mounted. It's a 303 caliber. Everything you see in here is original. This is a Mark IV gun sight. This was state of the art 1945. These were so top secret that they were supposed to destroy them if they got you know, shot down behind enemy lines. I take pride in what I work on. I try to make it right. I, I'm not gonna sign my name to something that's gonna fly in the sky and put somebody at risk. It's a big day for us here in the US. Also, it's a big day uh, in England. Today is the first flight since 1950. I'm a lucky guy who was uh, plucked out of England because I just happened to fly one like it. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Okay. Standing clear. Okay. Top airspeed is about 380 knots, which is about 440 miles per hour. Fast airplane, very fast. The only flying C-515 in the world. It's been sitting in the hangar very quietly back there, kind of forlorn, and now we got outside and flew it, and the airplane just seemed to jump off the ground. It was so excited. I've spent so much of my heart and soul into making it right, and that's my work up there. It's kind of like you know, a, a famous painting getting put on display. This restoration is second to none in, in every respect. Here it is, PR-503, at long last. The Seafire recently won the award for best fighter at the Oshkosh Air Show, and Cooper took home second place for his restoration.